scavenging for my belongings with a flashlight, betrayed in disbelief in the middle of the night when I found the walls of my bedroom empty, void of all the artwork you tore down and discarded that took me so many years to build, I was confronted with an unwanted mosaic of cleaner, wider squares, an indication of things that once existed to give me respite from the horrors of adolescence. I sit here, surrounded by blank walls because of you. My eyes wander throughout this room, inconvenience with dusty secondhand bookshelves and a particle board dresser you drag from the side of the dumpster as if Jehovah had left it there for you, overnight, a treasure chest just for you to store all these watchtowers you attempted to force down my throat as you dragged me door to door in a powder blue suit, too hot and stuffy to wear at four years old in the white reflective heat of Jack Murphy Stadium among all of your peers. So I took my little pants off and may have embarrassed us both, but <laughs> praise Jesus, I, this sweaty little pondesol of a boy was happy and you were much happier still when I stopped crying at eight years old, screaming, I don't want to go with you again to that congregation, a convention of crane flower followers to watch the dramatization of Lot's wife looking back, crystallizing into a pillar of salt, the magic trick performed by the actors with a white linen sheet, blindfolding all of these witnesses. But the trouble is I was confused because Jehovah told you to tell me we do not believe in magic tricks, and here I was witnessing a woman disappearing, which is to say you have lost yourself in this crowd and won't ever let yourself look back. And I don't know what compelled me to say that. I just didn't want to go. I just couldn't sit through hours in the heat with people I've never met telling me the things that Jehovah doesn't want me to do. And I question you, how is it he can see me? And then you hiss with impatient tongue that the devil lives inside of me. And ever since then, I have always wondered how you could say something so terrifying to a little boy that once took solace inside of you, worried with sweat that this was true, kept licking my skin to see how salty I tasted. A little boy, afraid of the ocean, because that is where salt comes from. I wonder if that is where sinners go after they disintegrate, after they've been sculpted into pillars or statues or figures of the false idols you shall not worship. The scriptures state, if it isn't written here, you cannot gather to celebrate, for Jehovah is the one true God. Your devotion must be exclusive. And this is where we live, in a four-bedroom house with a bellowing husband serving his sentence at a 7-Eleven, your oldest daughter, who kept slamming her door in your face, another daughter too young to have a daughter of her own, a son who got his girlfriend pregnant under my bunk bed, and me wondering why this family that took so many years for you to build is slowly being sculpted into a rebellion against you, against attending what you believe, this tribe I see in pictures inside dingy photo albums, a book of shadows from before I was born, the family I thought I knew posed smiling in front of a lit up tree or my brother on Santa's lap or these friends of yours crowding our living room, open mouths, buffet style, smiles, laughter, no pamphlets, but rather presents and presents exchanged. I squint and claw at this evidence. Some photos won't peel away, hopelessly stuck to the binder page. Some photos missing, cleaner, wider squares indicating things that once existed. It appears you've left a trail of salt behind you. And I am jealous. I am jealous of the life you led and all you held before I was expelled from your body. What made you follow this path of righteousness? Why do you forbid us to honor the day I was born? What moment triggered this ironclad chain? Is it me? Was it giving birth to me? Was I a mistake, an accident, a moment of his lust you had to see through until it ended, a passion you gave into and now you are unclean? Do you feel dirty because of me? An eight year gap from your previous son, the youngest, a baby oblivious of the teachings to come. Is this why you will never really see me, all of me, when I'm talking to you? Only to realize much later as we sit in dad's hospital room, this gap to smile, this extra 20 pounds, this skin I scratch, these features on my face, this yarn you taught me to crochet, this clean and bright song I sing, these things I inherited from you have always been here. 
They have always existed. Like the unresolved silence, we're constantly drowning in this ocean that surrounds an island paradise. You keep preaching to us about this kingdom of elite, obedient observers who will not put their right hand over their heart, who meet in a windowless room, who put on their best tie or their longest skirt, who never get to talk about all the hurt you were going to inflict on me if I didn't dispose of my sister's Christmas tree when I was 11 years old, filled with resentment as you accepted their gifts anyway, as I had to find the joy of unauthorized holidays in someone else's house, take the time to carve a pumpkin only to leave it at someone else's house, lie underneath the glow of a real pine tree and smile in someone else's house, make sure to hide the sweet tarts, the issues of men's fitness, the pictures I took at my first pride parade, all in someone else's house, up the street, from home to home, from place to place, you know that thing we practiced when I was little to see if neighbors had found their way. And so I guess I have you to thank for that lesson, that it will always be up to me to find my own heaven that it may take walking hundreds of loathsome miles before I find contentment with friends who will take me as I am, a chosen family that doesn't live here, in this room, stilted with its blankness, and a note you left on my desk in the summer of 2000 telling me I am not smarter than God. The Vampire Slayer and Miss Jackson are not idols to worship. This is bullshit! I think I screamed, his name in vain, loud enough for him to find me, standing inside this literal dumpster of a life, crying because I am a teenage boy who owns nothing but the stuff you can't stop yourself from touching every goddamn fucking thing that doesn't belong to you, you devil bitch! And I was tempted to thrash your wares about until they shattered, stack a pile of all your watchtowers, your Sunday bests, your mother's sewing machine, your emerald dress, smack dab in the center of this hovel and strike a match and burn it to ashes, let you feel my pain as a furnace combusts in your jewelry box brain. And I hate that you've never said I'm sorry because you believe Jehovah approves of this betrayal content with your decision, even if it meant I wouldn't speak to you for a year. Me, your son, the one you gazed upon every day as I woke up and went to school and gallivanted until 10 p.m. because I couldn't stand the sight of you, a looming figure prying into my drawers when I'm not looking, who leave her husband on his deathbed just because you're anti-blood transfusion and there you go again, imparting your views onto someone who's just trying to live his life. Well, I'll tell you what, this life is mine. And what's mine is this childhood desk that faces a window overlooking a parking lot where my car is, where sometimes I sit sobbing in my quartz filled hands and I don't know why I was put on this earth Will I ever be more than a servant to the roots I witness decaying before me? Who am I pleading to when I whisper, I'm tired of living here with these elders, the rest of the tribe left behind? If there is a God, could it be that he is punishing us for wanting to run? My sister, always swollen and struggling, my sister always the last to know, my brother currently caged for defending himself, the broken old man who's like a siren at sunrise, who swallows me alive in my dreams, the orange flames that streaked across our backyard, burning bushes the morning before everyone's Thanksgiving, my mother, the one who witnesses found in a state of denial, sweeping away forsaken debris, even though the Red Cross told us to leave. What do I believe when I force the words, dear God, out of my exhausted mouth? If you want us to pray, whatever your name is, can you promise me a quiet place? Can you disarm these weapons, her judgmental missiles, her insensitive grenades? Can you just let her walk across the bridge rather than use what you've taught as a barricade? Do you have the power to turn back time, superimpose my image 
into those pictures of those party people laughing so I can ask her what happened before I was carved into a black sheep that has to carry the weight of all these things before I was scared of the sea. Can you nestle me against her chest as I listen for her reassuring breath cradled together in a waterbed? Can I build my own watchtower without her knocking down my door? Can you let us find our own way? Is there a way to rip through these thrift store curtains, crash through the slatted glass? Tell that 17-year-old to get the fuck out of there. He doesn't have to stand for that. Tell the little boy, the devil doesn't exist. And even if he did, you're stronger than him. Ride your bike to the beach. You don't have to be afraid. Get your feet wet. Jump right in. Swim. <laughs>